We still have East. Oh, good basketball. Eastern Conference playoffs. We got to take a look at another one. It's the three seed Sixers, the six seed Miami Heat. Sixers finished the season the hottest team in basketball. Nice little 16 game winning streak. Miami, something of a surprise postseason squad considering their two best players were Goran Dragic and Hassan Whiteside when he was motivated. Our big stat for the series has to do with peak Sixers offense. When Simmons and Embiid are on the floor, the team averages nearly 115 points per 100 possessions, which is the best of any tandem in the Eastern Conference, Jalen. We know that the availability of one Joel Embiid is in question. Mm -hmm. But if the Heat want to win this series, what can they do to stop those two? I'm looking at you, Hassan Whiteside. They gave him a mega contract to be the anchor of their basketball team. Recently, he was fined for comments based on the fact he wasn't finishing and he was unhappy with his role, unhappy with his minutes. You just mentioned Joel Embiid probably won't play game one. Mm. Therefore, Holmes, Amir Johnson are going to be charged with slowing him down. He has to be dominant in the paint, scoring, blocking shots, grabbing boards, but more importantly, be playing with a level of enthusiasm and effort. If he's able to do that, now you can take advantage of the experience. I, am I silly to think there's no way he won't be motivated? Because if you're the Miami Heat, this is the team I have heard the fewest number of words spoken about. So you have to be coming in here with some sort of a, hey, let's, let's shock the world kind of situation. Absolutely. And they have a championship-level coach in Eric Spolster who continues to develop talent. And Goran Dragic came there and became an all-star. And let's not forget about Dwayne Wade. He showed late in game situations. He can be clutch. These are the type of situations that you hope to put him in. And one last thing. One of the things that the Philadelphia 76 is going to have to get used to is people going to foul Ben Simmons. And so I'm eager to see how the, uh, the Miami Heat are going to play that dynamic. Are they going to do it late in quarters? Are they going to do it at the beginning of the fourth quarter, try to get the ball out of his hands because he's been so dominant? Um, I want to talk experience-wise because we've talked so much. We've loved the fact that the Sixers team is so young and inexperienced. I mean, J.J. Redick is the oldest one by a lot. Then you have a Miami Heat team that's a little more geriatric if you were going to compare the two. Is that actually going to be beneficial to them in the long run? It is beneficial when you have experience because the great players, the best players on the Philadelphia 76ers didn't really get a chance to perform in the NCAA tournament. Joel Embiid was injured. Ben Simmons' team did not make it. Markel Fultz' team did not make it either. So this is going to be a different level of, of NBA basketball and heightened uh, awareness of when you're doing well and when you're not doing well. I think they're ready for the moment. I uh, assume that they're going to be enthusiastic <laughs> to, for, for the opportunity, but we can't sleep on the Miami Heat because, as you mentioned, they do have experience. Well, let's look at the stat that you put up at the very beginning there. When those two guys are on the floor together, and I mean Embiid and Simmons, they are as good offensively as any team in the NBA because those are two guys you do build a team around. And the mm -hmm. Miami Heat, to go back to the Hassan Whiteside question, he's a good player. But they're paying him like he's a player that you build a team around. And listen, I would defer to you if you disagree with me. I don't think he is. I don't believe Hassan Whiteside is a guy you say, well, we've got him. Now we've got a great chance to win a championship. And Bede is that. Simmons, I think, definitely is that. So the future couldn't be more ridiculously bright for the Sixers. And I just think they're flat out the better team in this series. There's no reason they shouldn't win relatively easily. But again, the stats that you're showing have Embiid on the floor. Right. The commentary that we're discussing is – how well they are with both of those guys. I get it. This but is they've why. won 16 straight games, and he missed a whole bunch Correct. of them. But that was not, that's not the playoffs. Now, all of a sudden, Hassan Whiteside, his performance is magnified. They need him to be dominant. To get back to something you were saying, I feel like the Sixers' youth can play to their advantage. you got to remember, I don't think anyone coming to the season thought – the Sixers would be anything close to this. I mean, we just I mean, wanted them in the playoffs. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to finish the season on a 16-game winning streak. Now, right. we get it that the postseason is something totally different. But there's something about when you don't have high expectations, you tend to play more free. These guys are young. They're, they're feeling good about going into the postseason. They're not – the expectations for this team is going to be next year because they've accomplished – what they've accomplished this year. So they can just go out there and play loose. But you know what also happens in the postseason? Strategy. Things that you would not do during the regular season and show your hand, people are going to now do different things versus the Philadelphia 76ers. Like probably switch a lot of Ben Simmons pick and rolls as opposed to going under and forcing them to shoot. Fouling Ben Simmons because he's a poor free throw shooter. Staying with the J.J. Reddicks and the shooters on the outside 
forcing them toward the basket and hoping that Sean Whiteside can be an anchor. So you have Sixers winning Easy. fairly easily. Yeah, five, six games. Do you guys agree? If Joel Embiid returns and plays at an elite level, I think the Philadelphia 76ers do advance. If he does not, this is going to be a seven-game series. Sixers and six. Sixers, Sixers and six. That's not easy for me to say. Speaking